Good evening, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. A bit of a night with a difference tonight. Normally, where we would have a guest, um, we would be seeing that guest now. <laughs> and ta da! <laughs> we haven't. So I'm just waiting for a few people to join the room. <clears throat> Welcome, see people coming into the room. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our Lyceum evening. Just saying, normally we would uh, have a guest. I had two guests uh, that I'd um, approached. One is being unfaithful with me with another church president. I'm just so hurt. <laughs> Hello, Phil. And the other one's been working very, very hard over the last couple of days, and the heat has taken its toll. So, not to uh, abandon everybody, we'll just have an evening, an open mic night. <clears throat> we normally start off with a topic or a thread or hear from our guests, but uh, with the absence of that, I'm handing over to you wonderful people out there to bring up any of the topics uh, that you would like to hear about, discuss, or thoughts, all relating to spiritualism. Usual house rules, no biting, spitting, or swearing. Oh, no, that's for the congregation. Um, joking. <laughs> we do not um, name uh, individuals or organizations. We just enter into things in the air of debate. So, um, while we're waiting for people to start, I'll start the ball rolling. Um, you have probably noticed the advertising for the rally day here down at Paul. Now, I'm not doing this as a self-promotion. It's just an interesting topic. Quite a few people have said, why? What is the point of this? You know, what, what are you doing? Uh, where's the mediumship? <laughs> Don't ask me that, please. Um, you know, what, what is this all about? Well, if we go back in our history of our movement, we used to have big rallies. And I know we touched on this quite a while ago, and I think it was with Ashley Robinson, if I remember. Um, but there would be really big rallies, uh, and there'd be places like in the Albert Hall. You know, and you would fill the place. People would come from all over the country and Europe uh, to join in with that, just celebrating what spiritualism is about and hearing talks. <laughs> Hello, Tim. How are you, sir? And hearing uh, talks about various aspects of spiritualism. There's a far greater, I feel, a far greater understanding about the movement back then than there is now. So uh, this time, although none of us wanted to be here, we are, and we're all making the most of it. And ourselves here at Paul and many other people are taking these opportunities to uh, do broadcasts like this, where we're talking with people, discussing thoughts and ideas on our wonderful movement of spiritualism, and really engaging with each other. And it is sort of like we're going through this revival time where people are actually getting that, this is interesting. You know, I, I have thoughts, I have questions. Um, and I'm being given that opportunity now to share, ask, and hear others' thoughts and opinions. So with the rally down here at Paul, we've got a wonderful lineup. I would say that anyway, but I say it because I really mean it. Uh, we have wonderful Elaine Bevan talking on the history of spiritualism, Brian Walker talking on healing, uh, Stephen Mager talking about science and spiritualism, Leonard Tatt who will be talking on the philosophy of spiritualism, and that will be rounded off by who else but hearing from spirit through the wonderful trance mediumship of Mark Stone. So great day. Uh, to and I'm forecasting the energy is going to be bouncing off the walls. Uh, but what's your thoughts out there? Do we do enough to promote spiritualism as a whole uh, within our movement? You know, are there places where we could maybe 
uh, up our game a bit and improve what we do and how we approach things or you're quite happy the way it is other things this time you know we're going through these constantly changing energies and everything going on very interesting uh, the things but one of the things currently going on is i'm seeing that demonstrations of mediumship in person are being hit in attendance numbers now what's your thoughts on that uh, have we had enough of them or is there with the abundance now <clears throat> i dare say what time is it seven o'clock if i were to flick through uh, just facebook just one social media platform i would probably find 15 20 dems of mediumship started or starting up within the next hour so um yeah thoughts on that so it's just nice open mic talk bring to the table whatever can be related with what we've just uh, spoken about or your own thoughts so <clears throat> yes good evening jack when i said earlier on um one of my proposed guests for tonight is being unfaithful with me with a, another church president i am referring to you mr jack <laughs> Have a lovely night, Jack. Mark Cassidy. Yeah, uh, interesting. We do hear this a lot. Um, and, and please, no offence meant here. When I was 13, 14, um, I remember hearing then we need younger people in our churches. Today, we're still saying the same. Uh, but what are we doing about it? Where are the opportunities? Where are the lost leaders um, in encouraging uh, younger generations? In and do younger generations want to attend churches and centres, or would they? Here's a thought: Would they prefer the philosophy of spiritualism being taken out into uh, the gatherings? You know, when we look at music festivals uh, and the like. <laughs> Have we ever seen a stand there promoting spiritualism and spirituality? There, oh, <laughs> now you've done it. Guess where I'm going to be next year at Glastonbury. <laughs> but yes, yes, um, we do. And it's, it's quite a generic phrasing as well. Uh, encourage more younger people into the movement if possible you know in on all levels not just attendance but uh, the mediums and the people who'll be running the churches and centers and events of tomorrow uh the circle leaders of tomorrow you know we've, we've got some marvelous people around at this time it is a bit sad when you we hear about the greats of the past and yes they were great in the past and there's many many a wonderful tale uh, to be heard about things that happened. However, I firmly believe that in today's movement, there are some amazing people, and these are the people who will lovingly be called the greats of the past in another 30 years. But we've got to try and ensure that there's people there to keep this going, keep this alive. Uh, is, is there a a risk of spiritualism going following the american model in the uk where you don't have obviously the uh, us as bigger geographically so distances to us may seem vast to them maybe not so vast uh, but where you would see just a sprinkling of churches and centers around and then in the bigger towns and cities, we'll have, they have what they call the, the, the shop front psychics, where, you know, you can walk down the town, you can go past butcher, baker, candlestick maker, and the psychic. Is that, you know, something? Tim, Tim Abbott, thank you, sir. Last Saturday, there was a large rally at the Arbitorium in the Midlands by spiritualists. It's called the Peace Walk. There was approximately 50 people there and started with a service and then on the march to the obelisk that symbolizes spiritualism, made him proud to be a spiritualist and to attend. That's wonderful, Tim. Why don't we hear about that? You know, that, that's news to me. Uh, and believe you me, I'm on the internet quite a lot. <laughs> 
but yeah yeah that is great you know it's it's taking the spiritualism out of the churches and centers um and bringing it more to the public eye uh, and we, we, there's something we really, really need to work on and consider ways of doing it. But going back there to Mark's statement, you know, what are your thoughts out there about younger people? Are we encouraging younger people? You know, um, quite often we say we need to do it when in actual fact we may find out that many places are doing it. So, Mark, if here we go. Fiona brings in an interesting point. The youngsters love music and food and socialising. Good point. Good point. So, you know, the format of a church or centre service may be uh, needing to look at or separate events. Uh, we had the Psychic Plowmans here and we had, we sold out 60 tickets and people loved it um you know and as a taster session for people to see mediums working it worked very very well but we also then need to be on our metal to provide the backup to that and not not fall foul of where i believe some places have gone where that becomes the norm but with no substance to it and when i say that i mean there's no opportunity there to grow and develop uh, and to bring in educational um events as well so yeah fiona very good ricky whitemore we're very young at newton abbott we have lots of people in their 20s and 30s hardly anyone apart from ricky over 70. yeah that, that is great and i know you have a quite a good education program down there with opportunities for uh spiritual unfoldment through the various circles you run so yeah so what's your secret ricky well, you know, how has that happened? Or has it just happened? Is it the demograph of your area? Interesting to hear. Sam Nurse. What's the significance of demonstrations in spiritualism? Sorry, mean no offence, but find them much less intriguing, interesting than Lyceum evenings. Well, thank you, Sam. <laughs> thank you. The evidential mediumship is spiritualism's way of actually proving what we believe in. And when I say proving, I don't mean 100% undeniable, but there is that substantial evidence that if you were to weigh it up as a court case, you would eventually come out with the um, proven uh, ruling against it. So, yeah, demonstrations very firmly have a place, but like all things, um, in balance, in, in my humble opinion. You know, it is part of what we do. It is not our whole energy and whole essence. So, where are we? Where are we? Mark Cassidy. If younger mediums are seen on the circuit, it may encourage their peers to attend. Do you feel that too many older mediums should be hanging up their halos? Two separate things there. Yes. Um, an interesting thing as well. It's not just the visual. Here's one. Here's one you can chew over. Um, it's not just the visual um, presence of the medium. You know, when you see younger mediums working, uh, it's not just the fact they're young, it's also the fact that they will talk in the language of today. When I was taking out uh, mediums with me to work who were uh, got as far as they would in circle, but not quite ready yet to do services on their own, it's a bit of a bit of a wilderness, that area in the development. So I was taking out several people with me introduction to other churches they could see them work safe you know that haven't given over a whole service gave them invaluable experience but i was fascinated hearing their evidence because they were bringing in things like TikTok and twitter as part of the evidential trail and i thought how fascinating is that although i spend a lot of time on social media <laughs> it's not in my energy that much um, and it's not something I'm picking up on. So, yeah, the younger mediums are also revitalizing the voice of spirit. So, and also, 
our gen well, my generation, um, we tend to be with the more what we understand again <clears throat> of my generation, the established family of Aunt Vi and Grandma and things like that. Well, grandmas today and going forward are gonna be riding motorbikes and have tattoos and piercings and things. So yeah, we need that younger input there to pick up on that energy with their own toolbox. Hello, lovely Heidi. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Phil, Phil Shaw. I think younger people prefer more interactive discussion around spiritual subjects with spiritualism being taken into the community. Music, creative art, sound therapy, etc., based events in centres and outside our churches. The word church often deters young people. Yeah, yeah, that is a, um, again, this is like we need younger people in our movement, cry. Uh, the word church turns people off. I, I don't get it myself. I, I sincerely don't. And before anybody starts. <laughs> I know some people have suffered at the hands of organized religion. I do understand that. But in the main, I find it a very strange phenomena uh, that we see quite a few churches being converted into centers. And quite often the first thing done to celebrate that is hold a divine service with a couple of ministers of, of that organization conducting it. I just think, hang on. <laughs> I, I struggle, I struggle with that. I think the word church, um, yes, like any word will drum up connotations with people, but it's what they find inside the doors, that's the thing. Um, you know, I as a serving medium, um, where I'm going around other churches, I have my own thoughts and impressions on the style of the services that are being held. And some of them really, you know, would not, as a newcomer, <clears throat> if that was my first impression, I wouldn't be in any hurry to come back. And other places, I go in and I just think, you know what, I love this. That's me, that's my thinking. Somebody stood next to me would have exactly the reverse uh, thinking. They may find what I find a little bit dry as comforting. And where I find a bit engaging and with humour and levity, maybe they would find that as uh, disrespectful. So it's very, you know, that's one of those ones I think we need to put on the side and have a look at later. So, but I like the thought there, Phil, about taking things out. And you mentioned like sound therapy, uh, gong bars, crystal bowls, things like that. Great. And we are seeing a lot more of that within uh, the movement of spiritualism. I do feel, though, um, that in some cases, are we losing sight of the divine thread that runs through? You know, we have all these various practices coming in under the name of spiritual, which are wonderful, which are interesting. I have a great interest in uh, shamanic practices. I have a great interest in sound therapies. But at the end of the day, I'm a spiritualist. And I apply what I know as a spiritualist to these subjects when I examine them. You know, are we at risk in some places of making whatever, whatever discipline, the nadir, the, the high point, the thing that we've got to uh, focus all our energies on without bringing in that balance opinion. So, yeah. Judy Caswell, lovely, wonderful wombo. <laughs> um, I don't know if this is just London-wide, but they have open house where historic local buildings are open to the public. If your church or centre has any history, maybe they could take part. Could be a way of getting people in. Lovely idea, Julie. And certainly, yeah, if you've got um, a great history, and I know going certainly up to the Midlands, uh, there are some wonderful historical value buildings up there. Um, one other 
aspect there are is as i say getting in touch with maybe universities are we failing to do that and lay especially what are we it's about september isn't it when it's freshers week um is there a missed opportunity there during freshers week to put on an evening especially for students coming into town and just saying hi we're here this is what we're about uh you know you, you you're here first time away from home you're gonna party have fun but also you know you might need somewhere where you just want to go uh interesting interesting lovely tim years ago I was involved with a committee called spirit of you it was a branch of the snu sadly now it has been disbanded i've heard quite a few things about the spirit of youth and like you um tim it is sad uh, that these things got disbanded you know just working with spirit we know that spirit energy is progressive it's ever moving it's very much it's not just of the time it's ahead of its time it's us that needs to catch up with them half of the time um but sadly in some areas of our movement that movement seems to have either ground to a snail's pace or completely stalled you know we, we are you know we're all over 21 here um we are going to see these recessionary times bite deeper deeper and deeper uh into our whole life everything within our life is going to be affected by it um i think we've got to as churches and centers really sort of like look at what we're doing uh, and go well can we continue as we are will we survive you know if we were just getting by before covid you most you're probably operating at a loss now um and then take on board some changes you know i've been it's a bit of a forced evolution on people and i don't like saying this but you know it is going to be a case of really you have to evolve if you do not evolve the chances are you're not going to be here this time next year so yeah we've got to um share thoughts ideas about what we can be doing you know how many churches and centers are used say three times a week so maybe six hours in total out of a week of seven days uh what are other opportunities uh for that premises to be used is here you know what else can be uh encompassed and keeping in keeping with what the churches and the centers are about but also earning an income from that to keep the place going yeah. anyway <clears throat> sharon rickman we need different visiting mediums now now that movement is allowed different philosophy and views very true sharon um and we are seeing uh I don't know if this is, no, it's not actually, because I've spoken to a few other people uh, in the UK. We've seen a great loss of mediums to um, the pools of mediums that towns and cities had. There's quite a number of mediums who have stepped back. Uh, so we do run that risk of being repetitious, especially where you've got three or four churches close together you know you've got to look at the programs and the schedules and make sure it's sort of like week one at one church is week two at another church is week three and just being repeated so yeah we do need different visiting mediums uh, but we've also got to look at uh why do we employ a medium you know do we want to do continual evidence 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 those of you that are aware of uh things here at paul church several of our services now do not employ an evidential medium that was brought in on a few energies firstly in acknowledgement of there aren't the mediums out there to call on anymore that used to be there <coughs> excuse me and secondly uh, to give the opportunity for growth and education with people um when i first proposed a healing service without an evidential medium somebody actually said to me well you won't get anybody in we're at 48. You know, <laughs> we're very good at doing that, aren't we, as a species? And no matter what, we're coming even out of spiritualism, no matter what it is. We say, I'm going to do that. Well, you won't do that, it won't work. Or 
no, you can't do that because I said, you know, <laughs> stop being negative. If it doesn't work, great. Go back to where it stopped working and try again. But definitely, yeah, we are looking for more, in my opinion, uh, more engagement from our speakers within our churches. Um, and it, it's a fine balancing act, isn't it? It's where do we uh, stop being educators and start becoming entertainers? I had a talk with a medium who is known and uh, there were comments made to this person about uh, they need to be more funny in their work. And I was just like, what? <laughs> I'm just like, really? <laughs> Where's that come from? You know? So, yeah. Um, but yes, Sharon. Yes. Sam, more charity initiatives, volunteering opportunities for young people. Oh, we like that. I like that. So how could that manifest? We could do a uh, luncheon club. Uh, if you haven't got your own cooking facilities, you can get around it by organizing the catering suppliers. So you need people to set the room up and be there serving out food, clearing up afterwards. Yeah. Good idea. Very good idea. Ricky, it's my youthful looks. Really? <laughs> Ricky, I know you haven't got a home at the moment, <laughs> but I'm sure you've got access to a mirror somewhere. It's my youthful looks. We play modern music, dress casual, jeans, T-shirts, etc. Don't harp on about the past, and we ask them what they want. Interesting. And from what you're saying, that is working for you. So very good. Very good. Well done. So here we go. Phil Shaw, it's important for the older mediums to adapt to a younger congregation in terms of presentation and relating to this generation in their own speak. In an ideal world, yes. Uh, I don't know how we could actually work with that. Uh, I really think me stood up on the platform going, you dude, may not quite come across as genuine. <laughs> oh, what's that? <laughs> um, but yeah, I think we need to... Um, we need to look at our congregation in our churches and centres and sort of like look at the demograph of those uh, congregation and are we only appealing to one demograph? Are we only appealing to one age group? Or are we, you know, are we appealing only to the upper age group or only to the younger age group? Um, do we need to broaden with different evenings or services coming in to appeal to other demographics? Things like, you know, we've touched on this subject before, so we won't go too deep in this one. Children in churches. Uh, we've got little... I love this. Sorry, I'm soppy. We've got little chairs and little tables ready in the church here. Uh, and if anybody brings youngsters in, out come the little tables and chairs, got colouring books and pencils, and we've got a big kid running the church. What do you expect? Um, <laughs> but welcoming in. Uh, people with children, you know, and making them feel comfortable. And I always think, you know, that works on so many levels because I always like to think that at some stage of that child's life, they may need to go somewhere. And having had that introduction to a church, it would not be an alien environment to go to. Also, as I've said before, uh, if I turned up at the church doors with a youngster in tow and they went, no children, we well, have just turned me away as well. Uh, because I well, certainly won't be going, oh, all right, well, I'll get rid of the kid and I'll come back. And it'd be like, well, oh, okay, that's fine. We don't come in. So, uh, yeah. Fiona Parry Dodd, who snuck in a photo. I was looking at a photo today and I'm like, that's Fiona in there. <laughs> As you said before, Laurie, it's not all about platform messages. The youngsters are bringing new thinking, new ways, and communication comes in all ways to support and bring communities together. 
Indeed, and a very important word you've used there. Thank you, Fiona, for bringing that into the conversation. Communities. Um, you know, when I say about the um, successes of Paul here, please, I am not being braggy or boastful or any any negative connotation it's just factual uh we have got a wonderful community thriving community feel in this church uh, and that's brought about by we encourage people to talk we have other events other than the standard church service we have a few social we've got a really good social coming up in september how's this for a fundraiser whose wine is it anyway <laughs> It's a wine tasting evening. There are seven different wines to taste. And there'll be a panel of three of us stood there after each wine telling you, oh, you're drinking now a Cabernet Sauvignon, blah, blah, blah. The next person will be saying, actually, no, you're not. You're drinking a Riesling and it's blah, blah, blah. Next person will say, well, you're both wrong because actually what you're drinking. It's, it's going to be a fun night. And with a wine tasting night, I... It's, we're going to have to have nominated drivers. But it's things like that which uh, bring people in. And it really fills my heart with this church. I can only talk from my experience here. Um, I hear comments like, oh, um, one of the daughters of one of the older gents uh, was saying, oh, I went out with so-and-so, one of the other ladies in the church the other night. We had a great time. We went and saw a show and saw a few wines too many. And I thought, that's great. That is so nice to hear. You know, that wouldn't have happened had they not met in the church and have that energy of talking and communicating with each other. And I, I, I'm just like, thank you, thank you. But, yeah, big word, that, uh, Fiona, community. Not only the community within the church, but integrating yourself within the community of the area of where you are. Uh, that is another big um, aspect of what we do and um, where we could look at to uh, either enhance or change direction or whatever or bring in lovely marion frisbee good evening my darling many coming into spiritual awareness are more for evenings of clairvoyance the deeper meaning of prayer praise and thanksgiving the widening and deepening of the knowledge through <laughs> philosophy seem not to be fashionable nor wanted it seems more about messages and a deeper understanding of the very reason for our life here. I agree absolutely there, Marion. I do. And we, we've, so, you know, when we look at um, attendees to our different events, we do see a difference. <clears throat> again without any prejudice or any any form any negative thing in the main people who attend our demonst well, demonstrations of mediumship are not people who would attend a church uh, and vice versa people who attend uh, churches are um, in the main probably not going to be drawn too much to the dems of mediumship so it is very interesting, you know, our, our movement, our religion works on different levels. And there are some people who are just quite happy to have the, and not being disrespectful, the ooh, ah, amazement of a message, and that's it, and they go home, gone. <coughs> Thankfully, there are others who uh, will see hear, witness these demonstrations and start to think hang on a minute is that something that i should be looking at you know so dems certainly have their place and uh mediums who work mainly at the bigger dems have my greatest admiration uh we've got the wonderful craig morris down here later this year in august uh, and he regularly works the bigger venues the theaters uh, and that is, to me, as a working medium, that is really hard energy to work in. It really is. But these people excel in those venues, you know, and it's, it's one of these unquantifiable things. 
if you've had a hundred people at your den, how many people out of that hundred will then go to a church within the next two months, four months, six months, eight months, a year? Uh, but we we just keep knocking. We just keep knocking. So the Dems certainly have a place, uh, and I'm never disrespectful to those mediums that get up time and time and time again to walk out into that spotlight. Um, but the seeds that we're sowing, um, you know, if we go to the parable of the sower of the seeds, it's very true, isn't it? Some fall on stony ground, some fall on uh thin ground and flourish and die but others fall on fertile ground and that's what we do within our movement you know each and so yeah i keep saying to people as one of my my current things is you know each and every message is a miracle you know if you've understood and it's been delivered correctly with evidence not just information i heard it tonight i was just flicking through the channels and i just heard this saying there uh, would you understand something, June, as a no, not that. Would you understand Sarah as a name? And I'm just like, what sort of statement is that? Yes. <laughs> I, I know Sarah, you know. Mm. <laughs> Our mediums, um, I've got a lot of work, a lot of work. Uh, we're working in a very new time, very new energy, very new approaches. And there is a great need for uh, support, upliftment from the divine in whatever religion, any orthodoxy. It doesn't matter. You know, it's the same light for a different window. But within our movement, uh, we have that wonderful opportunity here to bring that comfort, you know, that resolution, that healing through. Uh, but we've got to do this in uh, a deliverable fashion, you know, and not make a um, sometimes a mockery of what we believe in. So, yeah, anyway, there we go. I've drifted off there. But thank you, Marion. <laughs> Ricky Whitemore, sorry, disagree, Phil Shaw. We are a church surrounded by centres and yet argu arguably get bigger and younger attendances. It does, that is really interesting, uh, Ricky. I've not yet had the pleasure to be at your church, although Arisha has booked me in, I think, in November. Uh, and if she hasn't told you that, surprise. But <laughs> so I'm looking forward. Uh, to getting that and understanding um, what's going on, you know, why why is that happening? Why is that working? I'm great, you know, we've really got to look at how we operate, and we've really got to look at the times that we are in. Uh, all after the lockdowns, COVIDs, uh, it was like every other week I had to review different things about what we were doing because you know just kept changing all the time and even now we are still going through these changes um our attendances for the services is way way up uh i'm so pleased with that because um you know part of our measure of success is we engage very much with the congregation um we present different themes of services uh, throughout the year, Lyceum, healing, divine, family gatherings. So we're constantly keeping that energy going. Uh, and it's, as I say, it really is reflecting. When I say this, this is not proud, boastful or a fib. <laughs> we are regularly getting between 40 and 50 for our Sunday morning services. I'm going out serving other churches who are struggling to get into double figures, you know. So yeah, we we'll sit down and swap ideas over a steak, Mr. Whitemore. <laughs> I say that lovingly. All right, it won't be a steak, Ricky. I promise you. Um, Phil Shaw back. Oh hello, we're on tennis here. That's good. I prefer to stay with church rather than centre, but maybe a hybrid is an option. Oh, yeah, the church universal was a phrase once given by Jesus. 
So yeah, uh, and similar too to our online works as well. You know, where are we going with those? Lovely Jackie Buckton. More evenings like this, really enjoy. Also think church should stay. Fair enough, Jack. <coughs> this is one of these things of this time that we can talk. You know, uh, before it was just ingrained, wasn't it? Turn up church, good morning, how are you? Sit down, enjoy the service. Off you go, thank you very much, see you next week. But now we're actually now, we're coming out of that um, isolation. Funny, isn't it? We went into isolation, but in the isolation, we escaped our own isolation. I'm going to meditate on that one tonight. That's going to be good. But yeah, we suddenly become able to talk with people, uh, share thoughts and ideas, and even, you know, God forbid, have opposing views, but still remain friends. How beautiful is that? <laughs> Being facetious there. Uh, but yeah, um it is good to talk good old bt it is good to talk and you know because so many people are going oh my god i'm so glad somebody else thinks that because i thought i was nuts or oh i never knew that that's interesting tim abbott in the history of spiritualism many pioneers worked very very hard to get spiritualism recognized and approved as a religion why are we now <coughs> Sorry, I've got a froggy here. Why are we now trying to run away from that by denying our places of worship as churches? Here, here. Here, here. It's um, something I've noticed, and I notice odd things, so if nobody else has noticed, don't worry. It's just me. It's just Lawrence. But something I have uh noticed in a lot of this talk about churches v centers is actually hearing a really good valid solid underpinning reason why um it's all you know we do tend as a whole in our movement uh and in the running of our churches and centers to actually listen to the negative opinions and not acknowledge the silent majority. Now, I've noticed that many occasions, not just here in previous incarnations, I mean, of the church, not of me, um, but in other places as well. You know, I've been contacted by other churches and centres over this time because of this ability now to talk. Um, and invariably where people are meeting resistance to change or whatever in their church or centre, you can narrow it down through the conversation to it's less than 5% of the congregation are the ones who are creating the issue. And it's like, so why are you making everything fit around them? What about the other 95%? What do they think? You know, so yeah. Really good point, Tim. Thank you, sir. Um, I hadn't thought of it in that energy, uh, but that makes absolutely perfect sense. Yeah, we fought for years to become a religion. Now we're fighting to hide it. Yeah, that is very profound, Mr. Abbott. Thank you. Lovely Julie. Julie, Julie. Oh, it's me. You are busy tonight, everybody. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I don't think the church bit is the problem with the young. When we have certain mediums at church, a congregation seems to be younger. Julie, I've got bad news here, love. We are all getting to that age where everybody seems younger, like police, judges, and congregations. <laughs> Joking. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I personally think there is a greater awareness of energy um out there amongst younger generations again i know i've said this before but you hear terms like i like the vibe of that place uh, and there's some terminologies when they're talking about people and you say what does that mean and they get oh they're just they don't feel good and I'm like that i find that fascinating you know because it's, it's already there in their vocabulary 
So um, yeah, I, I I think the young are going to surprise us, but we need to match it. We've got mediums coming through now, like Stephen Mager from Portsmouth, very interesting, um, and works very much on a metaphysical level, which is talking more about energy, uh, and his um, philosophy or talk whatever you want to term it as is incredibly interesting and very relatable to all age groups so yeah <coughs> corin good evening my darling i've just begun to follow this community i'm 32 i never felt confident enough to engage before don't know why i guess i just wasn't ready and now i'm ready to follow the path well thank you Corinne, that is beautiful. And yes, we 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 forget that. Uh, I, I always like to occasionally go to back to what I call 1.0. Uh, you know, and when we talk about things in our movement, like we talk about circle work. Uh, Corinne, my darling, I will use you there uh, as an example and tell me if I'm wrong, please. Uh, but when we've got people like Corinne just coming into our movement, we're there yakking away about circles and they're going, what the hell is a circle? But maybe don't want to ask or maybe never have that opportunity to ask. Also, sometimes, sadly, in asking questions, some people go, oh, God, really? You know, and handle it so badly. And I've seen that and it's awful. Um, so, yeah, you know, we need to go back to 1.0 things so this is again this is part of the energy of the rally down here saying this is spiritualism this is going to give people an idea of what we're about so we will have people already well versed in spiritualism but hopefully we will also have a lot of people just interested and want to find out more so welcome corinne enjoy the ride <laughs> it's going to be fun and just remember, Corinne, my darling, no question is daft if you don't know the answer. Because nobody who talks on any of the subjects online or in our churches knew everything when we first started. All right. So ask away why. Why is such a lovely word. It really is. I like why. So, 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 so. Why? <laughs> Rigger Whitemore, he's got to go. He's sat on a rock at Dartmoor getting ready for sunset. Right, okay. This is not hanging upside down from the belfry. Karen Wood, good evening, my darling. Our paths cross again. How are you, sweetie? Churches have always been the foundation of spiritualism, but to keep the doors open, they have got to change the way they run the church. Dual service online and in person, discussion groups and counseling could encourage people. Spot on, Karen. Spot on, my darling. Uh, yeah. As I say, you know, it doesn't matter what it says over the door, it's what's inside that really counts. It really is. Um, one event we have here at Paul, the bereavement group, once a month. Brilliant. You know, it's not mobbed. Thankfully, I'm pleased to say uh, it's not mobbed. But as a part of the energy of the church, it's irreplaceable. It really is. It's, you know, the church here, and I'm sure with a lot of churches and centres being represented on tonight's uh, edition, they're not just open the doors, come in, sit down, listen to the medium, go home. They actually are a living, vital part of the community. You know, they are a place where people can go to to, to talk, get a bit of advice, uh, help out, or just run away to uh, if the need arises. I know that's not always possible. You know, a lot of our centres and churches are in hired premises. Uh, so, you know, it is only that at that time. But yeah, um, the churches, as I say, and again, this brings back to what uh, uh, Fiona brought into the conversation about community. You know, there's not going to be <clears throat> one uh, format which will suit all churches. Uh, different churches, different areas will have different 
you know, abilities and opportunities there. But it's, it's seeking out those opportunities and actively engaging them and not doing, oh, God, if this is something that, you know, makes me want to run away down the bottom of the garden and cry dibble or something. Well, we did it once. It didn't work. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> really? Why was that then? Why do you think that might have, <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah, we've, we're really, really going to have to work at what we do. Uh, we really are. And we're going to have to look also very deep into uh, are we allowing that? Are we uh, bringing people in to do things? Or are we being a bit insular in the way that we approach our duties? A lot of self-examination time coming up. Da, 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 da. Fiona, we have been out today on an international cultural event with cross-cultural face. It was of all ages, little chairs and big chairs. Oh, right, I've got you. <laughs> little chairs and big chairs, brilliant. Yeah, really good, Fiona. Uh, I'd like to ask, was spiritualism represented there? You know, I'll, I'll be looking at these opportunities to be part more part of our communities and not being a little island which we have been um those of you who have the unfortunate pleasure of following me on facebook you'll see up there was a post today uh, i said about low tech and high tech i've got a blackboard outside the church and it says in our divine services or our divine services consist of prayer philosophy healing and evidential mediumship because people walking past churches and centres, you know, it's all right to advertise a divine service or advertise a night of mediumship, but most people haven't got a foggiest idea what you're talking about. You know, what's the divine service? No idea, mate, but it doesn't sound fun. So, you know, are we getting that information out to people? You know, well, this is what it is. We've got the wonderful... Um, ability here at Paul where we stream our services live where people can watch and they can get from that the presence and <clears throat> what a divine service consists of what a lyceum service consists of uh, whether they be unable to attend due to distance or through uh, fear or nerves or whatever you know, at least people can see that. You know, we, we want to be a little bit more prouder of what we do, I think. Uh, and take it outside of the doors. It's, you know, not keep it just inside the doors. Shh, quick, come in. <laughs> you know, take it outside of the doors and actually say what you do. You know, we're having a morning of healing. Healing is, you know, attunement to whatever, whatever your description is. You know, and just getting that out there for people. Because people are looking for things. People are... Everyone has been shaken by this time and the continuing times. And everyone is looking for a bit of stability, a bit of reassurance, a bit of, you know, community. Uh, so, you know, are we getting out there? Are we getting our case out into that public eye enough? So, Corinne, lovely lady, from what I've seen watching online while I've had COVID is that you don't need to change. Just maybe let the public know it's an open invitation to the church. Also, maybe have a TikTok account, etc., to widen the audience, spreading the word. Thanks, Corinne. <laughs> have, you, have you been ear rolling on my meetings of late? <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. We uh, social media. Um, it's getting to that point, though, that um, it's becoming a full-time occupation. And that's fine. I'm not complaining. But we need uh, people also to join in on this and assist to make it happen. You know, and sadly, you do see in many places that the structure of the governance of these churches and centres actually is could be viewed as quite toxic uh where people trying to bring in something new are sort of like hissed at by the rest of our committee i'm not joking i wish i was but i'm not joking there um 
but yeah, social media, we've got to have that social media presence. And social media is a very demanding mistress. It, you know, you've got, there's no point in having an account and putting a post out about once every four weeks. You've got to keep on at it and on at it and on at it all the time. Uh, keeping it out there, keeping it relevant, keeping it fresh, keeping it up. Oh, hark at me, the youngster, keeping it fresh. But <laughs> keeping it relevant to what we do. So, yeah, interesting observation. Thank you, Corinne. I'm, I'm, I must admit, I'm, my knowledge of TikTok is very limited, apart from uh, there's somebody who is a builder, and he puts these tradey videos up where building works go horribly wrong. And I'm a big fan of them because they're really funny. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, the social media, it is out there. We've got to be on board and uh, you know, with it. So forgive me, uh, just going through the comments here. And thank you. You are very engaging tonight, which is beautiful and wonderful. Goodness. Karen Wood, it's a community that is important where people feel included and don't worry about going to a church alone after a loss of someone's close. So, so, so true. Um, you know, we try here um if somebody comes in we always make that special effort and this is something it's not a diktat from me to the volunteers it just happens because the volunteers are wonderful people uh anybody new come in you know quick tour toilets are over there help yourself to water from here sit over there and if we know somebody because we've got some lovely people in the church and go over and ask them would you know this lady's new uh if it's, it's right she sits close to you and because you've done that semi-formal introduction conversation ensues and suddenly they've come from walking in the door on their own to sitting there making a new friend so yeah yeah uh, and it's not just through loss uh why people come to our churches it is in the main obviously it's the nature of the beast um, but yeah, people are looking for answers. And as I say, our whole world has been taken up, turned upside down and shaken by the ankle. So people are just looking for some sort of sense, some sort of answer, some sort of understanding. Um, but letting people come in, you know, and I've endured this, me going to different places where you walk in, sit down, listen to the service go out, and nobody's said hello, goodbye, nothing to you uh you know and it's sad 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 <clears throat> fiona rosen spiritualism is all new to me since the passing of a close loved one but i get so much comfort from the church services and meditation and everyone is so friendly well thank you fiona and our sympathies go out to you on your uh, loss and your bereavement. But we are glad that you are finding, uh, firstly, a little bit of comfort, a bit of healing through the engagement with the churches. And never forget that opportunity there to delve a bit deeper, get some reading in, a little bit more understanding, or not. It's entirely up to you. Entirely up to you. Michaela Brown. Yeah, I agree with Ricky. Have the church, but evolve for everyone. I enjoy the new evolved church centres, plus the internet helps a lot also. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I must say I agree with you. Uh, we've changed again, you know, reverting back to what I know. Factually, here at Paul Church, we have changed the music, uh, we've changed the format, um, and all right, it's not to every, you know, no matter what you do, you are not going to please everybody. Rule number one in any aspect of life, whatever you do, somebody won't like it. If you try being everything to everybody, you end up being nothing. That is from experience in business in my book. So we do what we do. And yeah, if there are people who are a little bit unsure, we invite them along on the journey with us. But we don't allow 
Uh, any, I've got to put this so tactfully. <laughs> this is what we do. Uh, putting it really bluntly, like it or lump it. I don't mean it in that energy, you know. Um, I, would, I would never do it in that energy, but this is where we're going as a church. And I've had this conversation with a couple of people. We need to evolve because if we continue as we were, we'll be shut in two years because I've worked out the finances and we can't exist. It's as simple as that. So, yeah, definitely, I believe, big believer in the music. Some of the traditional hymns are absolutely beautiful. Uh, I must say, though, I recently went to a service where it was very, so orthodox. It was, it didn't move me. I, that was quite interesting, um, my lack of engagement with it. Because uh, I don't go out and dismiss things and just, yeah, rubbish. I, I, I try to understand why I'm not engaging with it. And it was, it was a really very, very dry, very, very orthodox style service. And I just thought, you know what, it's really not in my energy now. I'm not saying I want to be in there, you know, clown's nose on and beep, beep, things like that being disrespectful. But I do want to be engaged. I do want something different in the music. I don't want to hear bloody Mantovani or something, you know, I want something more, I want to come out uplifted, that's my thing with the church, I want to come out uplifted, I don't want to come out thinking, good God, what was all that about, I want to come out uplifted, not laughing and giggling and half cut drunk, I want to come out uplifted in my soul, and that's what we aim to do here at Paul, so yeah. Karen, you beauty. <laughs> I love you. So what's a circle? That is so good. Thank you, Corinne, because that really, really emphasizes, you know, we talk about getting younger people into our church. Okay. What are we doing about it? You know, we've got to take our mindset back to when we first walked into a church and knew nothing. So what are we doing to engage wonderful people like the lovely Corinne here uh, for that understanding of uh, what is a circuit? Corinne, I thank you so much. I'm gonna, uh, send me a bill. I'll pay you whatever you like, my love, for doing that. That was brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Um, yeah, that really highlights, you know, we keep saying we've got to get youngsters into our church. What are we doing about it? How do we tackle? How do we approach um, people like Corinne? And Corinne, I am not being down on you in any way whatsoever because you are the absolute epitome of part of tonight's conversation and it's beautiful. You know, how do we engage uh, and talk? with people like Corinne who are going to ask these questions or maybe not ask them, but what is a circle? You know, we've got to get out of ourselves and go right the way back to the beginning. Uh, how do we how do we manage questions like that? Because I think once we really start to think about that, we may then be on the road to uh, engaging with younger generations within our churches. It's all right saying get them in, but we need to put the groundwork in first. So what are you going to do as a church leader, church committee member, centre leader, whatever, whatever your title, and somebody asks you, what's the circle? So good. Corinne, mwah. beautiful. Thank you. Where are we? Where are we? Everyone's attending. Yeah, interesting. Fiona, everyone has different reasons for attending community events and will return if they have their needs met. Very true. Not only meeting their needs, but engaging with people and inspiring, um, you know, something, getting that spark going with people. Uh, <clears throat> hang on, hang on. Karen Wood, maybe spiritualist churches should work together more, listen to each other, and dissolve the barriers 
to all be one and deliver the philosophy and message from spirit. Karen, I wholeheartedly agree. <sighs> I've got to be so tactful tonight, I'm sorry. <laughs> um this is an energy that is ongoing about engaging with other you know like many areas we have clusters of spiritualist churches all up and down our land um and why don't we talk to each other why do we compete with each other that just creases me why do we compete with each other what why have we made it a personal thing uh yeah really really need to work on that energy really do uh there is so much more to be had by working together you know talking about um events that you may have coming up in the year you know you've got a medium let's face it this day and age uh if you're going to put a medium up for a couple of nights you can kiss goodbye to anywhere between 150 and 400 quid we're in a tourist town uh and hotel prices are astronomical Two nights in a hotel in September in Paul, £250 a night. So, right, I'm going to put on a wonderful night with, I don't know, Tim. There we go. I'll use you, Tim, because you're a lovely man. <laughs> put on a night with Tim. So, Tim and Jeanette are coming down here. Somebody's just walked across the church. Hello. <laughs> um, Tim and Jeanette are going to come down here. Uh, and do a workshop for us. So we're going to put them up in a hotel for two nights. So that's 500 quid. Then Tim and Jeanette are going to want their fees, which is absolutely fine. Absolutely. So you're talking a mega investment of money to have two other churches in the area also bringing somebody down from somewhere else and incurring the same sort of expenditure. And you just think, really? <laughs> really <laughs> so yeah uh brilliant 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 statement there karen and the answer is in the hands of the people who run the damn churches to get off their backsides get out from behind their ego or whatever it is that stops them talking to the other churches whatever happened you know oh 30 years ago <laughs> You know, you hear that? Get over it. Get over yourself. Work together. You can share an online calendar. You can have an online calendar for just the churches in the area. Each church has got their login to that calendar. You put your events in there. Other churches can see what's going on. So, also, now, now here's something radical and just made me giggle. We had the wonderful Jack over with Lola from Denmark. I approached uh, other venues. Um, I can't say too much because it will identify. I approach other venues and say, listen, we've got Jack over from Denmark. He's the head of the Danish Spiritual Association. He would like to do some more services while he's over here other than Paul. Uh, would you be interested in him serving you? Oh, no, it's all right. We got somebody that night. All uh, right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm not blowing my trumpet or Jack's trumpet. Here. This is like a one off opportunity. Um, do you, you not think maybe that you could just reorganize a little something? Oh, God, no. You know, other mediums coming down to pull from other areas and abroad. Uh, in fact, um, yes, there is a medium coming down in November who will be working at another church while they're down here because they're here, they've got the accommodation. The only opportunity probably that church will ever have to have somebody of this caliber to go and work at their church. This church, this time, actually picked up on that and went, oh, God, that'd be great, thanks. Other places, oh no, it's all right, we've got somebody. I'm just like, fine, 
fine, absolutely fine. Anyway, <laughs> Tim, I think it would be good if we look at some of the positives that have come out of spiritualism. So example of 25 years ago, if you've not seen a healing room in any hospitals, where today there are many healing rooms in many hospitals. Tim, agree, absolutely. Yeah, um, it's a human nature thing. And if we were going down that route, I apologize. I do try to remain in a positive energy. Um, but yeah, we have achieved so many things and so much potential. We have so much potential. One of uh, our church healers here took herself away on a weekend course, which then allows her to go into hospitals and deliver spiritual healing. She this, this necessary certification. A, hats off to her for doing that. B, thank you so much because the lady who is taking those courses will now be coming to Paul to certify the rest of the healers. Uh, but C, have I done? I don't know. Anyway, C, again. <laughs> How awesome is that, that the NHS recognise uh, spiritual healing as an alternative therapy? You know, how many, 30 years ago, <laughs> good luck with that one. <laughs> good luck going in a hospital and going, hi, I'm a Reiki healer, I'm here to help. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, we really have. Uh, and through uh, various organizations as well. You know, we are now represented at the Cenotaph, where that wouldn't have happened 30 years ago. We are a recognized religion within the United Kingdom and all that that affords. Uh, and that's something we need to go back to again. This is nice. Uh, go back to that 1.0 uh, about what are we about? What have we done? You know, whose shoulders are we stood on? When I go up on that platform there to work or any other platform, I'm also always so, so aware of the shoulders of the people who have gone before who I'm now stood upon. You know, I'm not getting up there as me and having a good time. I'm there because of the years and years of hard work, dedication, toil, anguish, pain, that people have gone through to allow me to work as an evidential medium without fear of recrimination or anything. So, yeah. Thank you, Tim. <laughs> and Bennett. Oh, goodness me. Apologies if I'm not catching up with you all, but uh, there's quite a lot of input tonight, which is wonderful. And Bennett, many years ago, a church used to go I used to go to had previously had Lyceum for young children, including some Bible teachings. It was initially a Christian spiritualist church until the as a new stepped in the hymn books were replaced. It divided the church and caused upset. It was then watered down, such a shame. I believe sometimes good old fashioned hymns are nice. It raises the spirits and vibes, which also helps with the demonstration of evidential mediumship. Break that one down. You know, and when I first started saying about lyceums here, I lost count of the number of sighs that I emitted when people were saying, but a lyceum's for children. I thought, no, it isn't. <laughs> Please go and look it up on Google before you say that to me ever again. Sadly, in this day and age, childcare, nightmare. Absolute nightmare um, to have it set up like that. Hence, we have the Lyceum services. Uh, and again, children are always welcome. So the old style of Lyceum for young children, absolutely beautiful, practically nightmare, absolutely nightmare. We've got a lovely lady here who's a great help. And I call her my leveler because she always talks sense to me tells me to stop being an idiot, get out of myself and do it properly. And I love her for that. Uh, and she runs her own private nursery. And she said once, she said, don't ever even think about it here. She said, because the paperwork alone, you 
you would need a full timer just to keep on top of the paperwork. So yeah, Lyceums, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Um, <clears throat> old fashioned hymns. Yeah, I've got nothing against the old fashioned hymns at all. Uh, we do a nice mix here of um, the old traditional. We don't call them old fashioned. We call them traditional. Uh, traditional hymns, sometimes with a new arrangement to it. Uh, so it's, it's still uh, the same wordage and the same energy behind it, but it's just sung differently. Uh, then on special occasions and uh, where it demands, yeah, the traditional hymns, you can't beat them. Christmas time, carols. Yeah, don't you dare try you know, I went into a church once where the wordage had been changed to carols, so it was correct. And after the first verse, I just went, I can't stand it. So I just belted out the original version, and I was getting poked in the ribs by somebody I'd gone with saying, don't sing that. <laughs> I thought, bugger it. <laughs> <laughs> that's the one I know, and that's the one I'm singing. Um, yeah, yeah, but uh, the traditional hymns are beautiful, and there's so many that support and often reflect uh, the energy of the service, be it through the philosophy or anything. So, yeah, yeah. Daniela, my buddy from Inverness. I feel working on communities through Facebook probably works best due to the average age using it rather than TikTok, but maybe worth giving it. I'm right, I'm right. We'll have a go at TikTok. You will all rue the day you asked me to do that. I tell you, you rue the day. <laughs> Phil Shaw, thinking about it, more focus on social media from churches may be a very good idea because young people's lives revolve around this, so it's a major source of communication. Indeed, indeed, it is. Craig, good evening, sir. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Looking forward to seeing you in August. Really looking forward to catching up with you. Tim Abbott, you talk about wanting to come out uplifted. Well, why come out at all? What about a sleepover? Don't you start on this. You could have a medium tell stories of the different experiences that they've had over the years and maybe some food. And before you know, it, it will be tomorrow. A sleepover of like-minded people. I did have a lady, and this is no lie, you know, you know what, running a church, sometimes you just stand there and you are totally lost. Even I get totally lost for a response. And she went, we could have sleepovers. And I went, well, that'd be a good idea. Said, but actually, we should do them sky clad. Well, those of you who are not aware, sky clad is terminology for in the nutty. I'm just looking at this person who is deadly earnest and serious, and I'm just thinking, <laughs> where do I start? <laughs> yeah, yeah, why not? Why not have a sleepover? That'd be great fun. Um, oh God, there's so many jokes in there as well. I love it. <laughs> but yeah. But it's, you know what, Tim, you're, you're tapping into uh, a really good energy there uh, about doing things differently. You know, I I just say there is, I look around this world and I, I just see potential. And that's not being smug or condescending or trying to be clever. I, I genuinely mean it. I see potential in our churches, our centres, our movement, our mediumship. Our congregations, the people who come in, um, there, there is just so much potential because a lot of the old, you know, I don't like this term about uh, woken up. Um, it starts dragging in some of the other connotations of it of, well, if you're not thinking in 5D, you get left behind. And I'm just thinking, well, I've never heard anything ever in spiritualism or in the divine essence about leaving some people behind. I'm sorry, that just, to me, is a total nonsense. So, but there is, you know, 
if we've got a damned hard world out there you know if you if you just took stock of everything today of what's happened in the last three years and just really really sort of like engage with all that you know everything within the world within our health within politics uh, within our very life energy it's been flipped upside down but in that it has removed a lot of our old as I said, I don't like the word woken up, but it does fit it. You know, we were in a bit of a stupor pre-COVID. It just carried on and on and on. And we're, oh my God, it's Christmas already. How did that happen? You know, how often did we say that? Um, but suddenly now, you know, everything's changed again. As I say, from me, my humble perspective, I just look out and I just see possibility and potential. And one of the hardest things I have to deal with uh, running a church sometimes is when I see potential in people and you really give that encouraging hand and it's not met back by the same energy and it's just let slide. I, I, it took me quite a while to understand how to manage that energy. But yeah, we have got potential out there we have got all these possibilities to do different things to approach and engage uh talk about with paul we use the three e's we educate engage and encourage with people uh and the ways that we can do that so uh yeah yeah thank you tim minister kim good evening my darling uh, Mr. Kim, who will be with us in a couple of weeks' time. Yeah, two weeks a day. You do that in Tor Bay. You'll have to remind me what you do. <laughs> so, uh, where else are we? Do, do, do. Libby, Libby the healer. Suggest change and comes out of battle cry, but we've always done it like this. Yeah. Yeah, and again, we've got to look at uh, the structure and the ethos of our committees and, you know, what are we working to? Um, what documents are we working to? What was the, the guidance that your church or centre was set up to? You know, and are you following that or is it still relevant to today? Um, yeah, just being, we, we don't like change, do we, Libby? And once we've got a, once we've got in the groove, you know, we, oh, no, don't change it. It's working. You know, leave it alone. <laughs> Sharon Louise Hobbs. There are some churches that are not forthcoming enough for the younger generation, even new people. They get ignored and then people don't go back. Some of the people are clicky and if you don't fit into that, then you're done for. There are some beautiful little churches around with some beautiful people. Spe yeah. Sad spiritualism has an ego. The younger gen do everything online. Churches are becoming a thing of the past. Interesting. Interesting, Sharon. Uh, sorry that you may have had the um, experiences there about clicky. Um, but yeah, I get it. I've experienced it myself. Uh, both as being a member of the congregation and also as a serving medium, would you believe? Um but again, just going back to the energy I was just touching on just before this about the possibilities, you know, that are open to us uh, to shake off these uh, old shackles that are keeping us, holding us back, you know, because we really are, we've been forced into evolution in our churches and centres and things are only going to get harder and tougher and more uh tighter over the next few years and if you're not out there and bringing in uh people of today's world and from a business point of view and sorry you know we have got to look at it as a business as well you know and then maintaining that revenue income in in two or three years time a lot of these places are just going to start falling by the wayside um as simple as that but you know we have the we have the ability 
you know, we've got the greatest resource in the world. We've got our connection with the spirit world. We've got to sit. We've got to understand. We've got to do what feels right, uh, what we're inspired to do, and not run it from a place of fear or whatever. But, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I will disagree. Churches are becoming a thing of the past. They are not the provident they are not the prominence they were of the past but they are not done and dusted yet by any means uh and i believe that where the dust will settle probably and we're talking more than likely here four or five years uh of hardships coming up and once that dust has settled the ones who have survived who have made their church or center a thriving community will stand head and shoulders and they'll be so uh far advanced in that position to start the rebuild that is going to be required because they will have you know endured and survived what is going to be a re you know, i'm sorry to be a gloom and doom merchant here but you can't dress it up it's going to be a damn tough few years and it's going to stress and test everybody, everything that we know. Uh, but as for tonight's energy, we're talking about our churches and centres. But the ones that do survive, they are the ones who will be setting the trend, other role models for the future, because they are listening to their communities and they are doing the work of spirit. Tim Abbott, another positive about spiritualism is we have survived COVID and lockdown. People talk about small congregations since things have opened up again. I remember an old, old spiritualist minister telling me, always remember, Tim, one person is a congregation. Very true. Yeah, I agree, Tim, on the energetic level. Um, yeah, the smaller congregations, they are still valid. I had a little lesson today. I reacted probably in the wrong way to something that happened. And somebody said to me, who are you to talk about that to them? They they may be very lonely. And I thought, oh, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. So I went back and made amends. But yeah, yeah. Uh, our whole service, we may give the greatest service of our life or maybe we even think we've just done the worst service of our life. But if we've touched that one person, we're doing our job. We are doing our job. Sadly, sadly, we need that revenue. We need that income to survive and uh, keep forging ahead. Minister Kim Moore Cullen, listening to you from an airport in Porter. Well, you didn't have to tell us that, darling, did you? You could have said, I'm down the pub or I'm in the garden. But, oh, no, you've got to be <laughs> at an airport. And we're lucky you, darling. Absolutely wonderful. <clears throat> Libby Bellhouse, the answer, simple answer is yes, my darling. When it's organised, it will not be happening this year uh, because the lady who is giving the training has personal issues that need to be resolved once she has. And of course, and Libby, I'm actually disappointed in you, Libby. Will the training to go into hospitals be open to healers from other churches? Libby, when has Paul Church ever, ever, dissuaded healers or people from other churches to attend our courses. Shame on you. <laughs> I don't, you know, the healing workshops here are phenomenal because, you know, I'm a great believer of probably we may not be supporting our healers so well. Um, and our healing workshops are attended by healers from other churches, because our Libster is one. <laughs> and yes, I should think so. Yes. Apology accepted, Libby. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Uh, and it, again, this is a nice example where we can uh, cross-fertilize between churches. We've got one, two, three, four other churches with active healing. Uh, three other churches with active healing groups operating in them. Uh, and they all uh, come to Paul for the workshops because we're doing them. And again, none of this is boastful or arrogant. 
uh, it's just simply we're, we're doing what we feel drawn is needed to do and it, it's working working anyway everybody i was a bit concerned thinking i'm not going to find anything to talk about an hour and a half later i'm still rabbiting on so <laughs> thank you everybody for joining tonight uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, just, you know, just some of these thoughts. Apologies with not bringing everybody's comments in. I was just trying to keep up with the flow of the energy of the conversation. Um, but, yeah, very interesting. It is good to talk. It is great to go away and think about these things. And hopefully, you know, where we are in the position to start bringing in a uh, cause and effect on what we do in our churches and centers to go back and just, you know, look at what we're doing, why are we doing it? Why do we do it this way? You know, uh, could we do it better? So much, so much, so much. So anyway, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Whether you're watching tonight or in the future, hope you found something in there just to stir. And as I said, you know, <laughs> We don't all have to agree at times, and that is that really is allowed. You know, it is absolutely fine to have a different viewpoint and still talk to each other. So, um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you all. Lovely comments coming in. Bless you all. Bless you all. Um, what have we got? Oh, there we go. Tim. I love Tim in the room. He always brings in things great. There was a wonderful film called Field of Dreams, and there is a phrase, you build it, they will come. Tonight, you build the space and gave us the platform. We came and joined you. Thank you, Tim. <laughs> Thank you. I'm not really a Kevin Costner material, though, am I? No. <laughs> Seriously not. <laughs> Anyway, everybody, thank you. Uh, wonderful evening. We'll catch up again online. Don't forget meditations on Mondays and Saturdays at Paul Church. Our Lyceum nights on the Saturday night at 7 o'clock. And our live uh, stream services to view only on Sunday mornings at 11 and Wednesday afternoons at 3. So thank you all for joining in. I've enjoyed that. Uh, very interesting trains of thought coming in there. And a couple of things that I can take away and work on regarding uh, what we do here at Paul. So thank you. You are part of the evolution. <laughs> Have a brilliant night. Oh, here we go. Kim out there in Porto. See you soon. That quote has meaning for me. Brilliant. There you go. Well done, Tim. <laughs> I hope you've had a lovely holiday, Minister Kim, and really looking forward to catching up with you in a couple of weeks' time. Uh, I sit and have a good old jaw. And Minister Kim will be our, on our Lyceum evening in a couple of weeks' time. How fabulous is that? I don't think I've actually asked her to do it yet. So, um, surprise! <laughs> Have a wonderful night, everybody. Uh, stay safe, stay sane, lots of love, and we shall see each other again soon, and no doubt. 